Good morning, everybody. Uh, so, <laughs> another week moves on. That's warm today. Um, I had a request about doing a video on attic window. So I had a rootle through my cupboards and I found this project, which I did a couple of years ago with classes. And I'd forgotten actually how nice this is. The poor thing just lives in a cupboard. Um, but the really the aspect of this is that we use a panel, usually a picture, which we then chop up and we add frames to give this 3D effect as if we are looking through. So it's a great exercise on uh, working with 45 degree cuts, uh, mitered corners, Y seams. So there's a lot of techniques in this. Now, when we did this as a project in class, not only were we challenged as to how we were putting the frames in, but also people had to do three types of quilting. So there was some machine quilting, which might have been using the walking foot, um, a stitch in the ditch, possibly. And there was some free motion quilting and even a little bit of hand quilting. So you can see the effect. And if you think about it, you are either on the inside looking through the window to something outside, or you are outside looking in. So that's the effect that we're trying to get. And the colour placement for the sashings is quite important. And there's also a thin strip which breaks it through, which is the, the sort of the frame, if you like, of the window. So that's what it could look like when it's finished. But how does it start? So I obviously didn't have an awful lot of panels in the house. So I found this one, which I bought from the sewing bee in Llandudno uh, last year and I was doing some classes there. And it's the 12 days of Christmas and I haven't done anything with it. So this one obviously is not a picture as such, but it could work in the same way. And the, the rectangles are already marked out. So with if I was going to work with this one, I would cut all of the panels out and make each one of these a frame, but obviously with the centre frame staying as it is in, in one piece. So this would be a different effect to a picture. And then I found this, which I hope is going to work. Now, this is not, it was a panel, but I've quilted it so it's actually finished. But this is a very popular uh, idea for making an attic window because attic windows are usually hung. They don't sit flat. They need to be hung to get the window effect. So the idea of having one as a Christmas tree is very popular. Now, the hardest thing before we do any of the technical things on the, making the frames is where do we make the cuts? Now, something like this, the centre is the star on the Christmas tree and there's our centre line that runs through and runs through where the pot is and you would work away from that. If we look at where the peacock is, you can see where the face of the peacock is and that's in the centre of the panels. Now, if you look carefully, you might not be able to see this, the panels on either side are not the same width as the center panel. They're narrower. But what was really important for this piece was that this center panel had to have the peacock's head within that frame. Now, if I'd have chopped through the middle, I'd have chopped his head in half. So that's really important, but there's no specific measurements for where we make the cuts. You have to decide based on the picture. So with this one, we would want the star to be in the centre panel. So a panel like this lends itself to being chopped into three. Now it could be three equal pieces as long as this is in the centre and then however many pieces you cut that way is entirely up to you. They don't have to be square. As you can see in this one, they're rectangular. And I did three across by four down. This one possibly would definitely only be three across. It couldn't be four because you're not gonna cut through the center of the star, but it might just be three that way. On this one, this would be different because the lines are already in place 
of where the cuts are going to be. Now, there is a small spacing here. And what I would try to do is cut in the middle of that. So I've got a little bit of a seam allowance. So I don't, I'm not eating into the frame of this one. But that's the first thing to do. Now, if I was going to have a panel like this one, I would be marking this very carefully before I started doing any cutting. So I would get a ruler, I would be drawing where the lines are or folding it first to see where the balance is. So if we go back to this one, what was important is that the face was in the centre of that panel and what was remaining became the outside panels. So there was no measurements as such with this. It was all purely based on the pattern and the picture. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is, <clears throat> so these pieces are not the same width as this one. Now, this distance also doesn't have to be the same. So if you've got a picture, now there's one I'm thinking of, are a beautiful Japanese ladies, and one of our ladies made this panel in fact, I know there were two now I'm thinking about it. And it, the, we didn't want to lose the faces of the Japanese ladies. So the cuts going this way were also dependent on the picture. So one of the ladies had a very small panel at the top and then longer panels. So imagine if we took this line out so that it fitted the picture. Because think of it in a, in a window. Yes, you might have them all the same size, but you might have a transom, you could have side panels. At the end of the day, it's your piece of work. So you can do exactly what you want with that. So that's the first thing to think about is where are the cuts going to go before we break it up? Now, if you've got a picture, so imagine if we cut down here and we've got a very plain piece and we've also going to have a very plain piece on this side. It's a good idea to label them so that when you put them back together, they are in the right side. Obviously with the centre one, that becomes easier, but it'd be quite easy to get them upside down. So in this one, that was a tricky one because these flower pieces were quite similar. And so I had to label them so I knew I was putting them back in the right place. So spend a bit of time on deciding where the cuts are gonna go. So that's lesson number one.